Today I want to give an update on my Heresy 4 speakers I've now owned for almost a year and a half. I've owned them ever since they came out and I would never get rid of them. In fact, I threw away the shipping boxes the other day because they were taking up space and I knew I would never sell these speakers. My heart already, you know, they belong in my heart and soul and that's where they are and that's where they're going to stay. I have other speakers and other speakers may come and go, some stay. But these are speakers I guarantee you will never go anywhere. Um, they are fantastic speakers, but they're also chameleon-like, meaning you can get them home and hook them up and they might sound awful. You're expecting to hear this big, beautiful, fluid, full, expansive sound without harshness or color coloration like this. And you get them and you hear all that stuff and you're like, what the heck? These reviews have been praising this speaker, you know, all over YouTube and the internet. You know, not all of them, but I'd say 95% of Heresy 4 reviews are like, yeah, these are killer. But I've heard these speakers sound like $20 speakers, and I've heard them sound like $15,000 speakers. Uh, they're very chameleon-like. It depends on how you power them. I will say that the Heresy 4s love Class A, and they love high current. Sure, you can run them with a flea watt amp. You can run them with 3 watts or 6 watts of 300B power, 45, whatever tubes you like, and you'll get a nice, pleasing sound out of them. But if you want the most, if you want slam, if you want dynamics, if you want kick and thump, and if you want realism, um, expansive sound stage, really amazing imaging, but all yet with a warm, leaning, big live sound, Power them with something um, with Class A amplification and high current. I ran these with 250 watts, uh, the, the past labs, into 250, and that was the best I've heard them sound. Um, I've powered them with a name Atom, and it sounded good, but that was thinner, a little brighter on top. It didn't have the body. I've powered them with the Wilsonton uh, tube amp and it sounded pleasing and full and nice, but it lost out on the expansiveness and that dynamic impact. I've powered them with the little Sprout 100, which I have behind me, and they're it's powering them right now. Um, it's a Class D, $700 all-in-one with a DAC, a phono stage, Bluetooth, 100 watt per channel amp. I think it's 100 watt, maybe it's 50 watt, but it sounds really good with the Heresy 4. And I'm just running some cheap cable that I recommended in the past on my website. Uh, and I think in a video or two, that's just copper cable. I was listening last night in here. Uh, I had the lights out in the living room and I was just listening softly. And I was like, how could it get any better? What, why do I have that reference system in the back with La Scala's and mega amps when this sounds so good? But I've powered these Heresy 4s with tubes, with class D, with class AB, with class A. And they absolutely, without question, to me, sounded the best with the two Pass Labs uh, offerings, the Integrated 25 and even the Integrated 250 and even the XP10 and XA60.8 monoblocks I have back there. Now, I don't have any deal with Pass Labs. I don't make a cent on my audio reviews. Um, I just speak from the heart and I speak what works for me and what I like. Now this room in here is not really an ideal room for these speakers, but I was listening. How could this be so good, right? Last night, I'm like, why do I have all that money in that system when this sounds so dang good? So I turned it off and I went back into my listening room. I turned up or turned on those La Scala's and then I was reminded of why I have that room. That room in there takes me to another world. I almost had another religious experience last night in that room and I'm not religious. Um, it was just surreal. It was beautiful. I was enveloped in the song, in the performance. It was never harsh or bright. The bass was sounding amazing back there. And I'm like, I would never need a subwoofer. Everything was clicked into place. And you know, sometimes your system sounds good on one day and bad the other day. I have a feeling I know why that is, but it was sounding so good last night. And so was this. Um, so what that tells me is I have the Heresy 4s here, which are the starter speaker in the Heritage line. But in all reality, they're really just as good as all the other speakers in the Heritage line. They each have their own little bit of character. And the room and amplification pay, 
plays the biggest part in how these speakers are going to sound for you. I had a guy write me after my Heresy 4 review and he said, I bought these on your recommendation and when I put them in, they sounded harsh and bright and thin and shouty and I was like, what? And uh, I asked him what he was running with them and he was running a $300 uh, Sony receiver from Best Buy. And I said, well, that's your problem. Um, you, you need to feed these speakers quality power and the better the quality you feed them, the more they will reward you. They're chameleons. You should not judge them when you're running them with a cheap AV receiver. That's not gonna fly. These speakers can scale all the way up. Even if you put a $20,000 amplifier and some $20,000 speaker cables, they're capable of delivering sounds like you cannot imagine. They can sound like a million bucks if you power them right. If you power them poorly they're going to sound like twenty dollar cardboard speakers it's not the speakers it's how you drive them right you wouldn't put a volkswagen beetle engine in a ferrari right so while these are not a ferrari what i have found is they're more than capable of scaling uh, to whatever you feed them and rewarding you in the process now today's klipsch heritage line 2021 the heresy 4 the cornwall 4 the forte 4 the la scala al5 and the klipsch horn are much different speakers than they were back in the 60s and 70s and when Paul Klipsch designed these speakers, right? They are much more refined, they have much better crossovers, much better horn technology going on in them. They image better than most speakers I've heard. They have a wide expansive sound stage. The Scalas can play tricks with your ears. I heard a sound behind me yesterday. I jumped when I was listening and I'm like, oh, that's in the song and it somehow ended up back here. They can do all these amazing audiophile things. They're no longer just party speakers that are fun. These are serious speakers, even if you're an audiophile. They're designed to be put on the floor, slightly angled towards your listening position. I think when I listen in the listening, listening room, they're about seven feet apart seven or eight and I sit seven or eight feet away and they're aimed kind of um, to meet behind my head. So they're not aimed directly at me. Uh, they're aimed to fire directly behind my head. And this gives me the wide sound stage, the imaging, uh, and in no way is it bright or shouty. I also get the best bass performance from them. And these things really can kick out the bass. It's a whole new level compared to the Heresy 3. Uh, I had the Heresy 3s and loved them, but once I heard the 4s, it was kind of like on an all-new level. These are some of my favorite speakers of all time. They were my 2020 Speaker of the Year um, because I know that when you position them right, give them quality power and a front-end source, even you can make them better with cables, but cables are more like a tone control, really. Even very expensive speaker cables, they'll alter the tone of your sound. You want a little warmth? add a certain cable in. You want a little uh, brightness or detail, add a silver cable in. So I, I found that you can improve or change the sound of the Heritage line with better cables. Um, or you can just use regular old copper, which works really well. When I play them in there, I'm using Nordust Blue Heaven. When I play them out here, I'm using really cheap copper cable from Amazon. Yes, they sound better. They have a bigger sound stage. They're more expansive in there, a little sweeter but they still sound amazing out here in this more modest setup, which goes to show you don't have to spend a fortune, and you guys know this, to enjoy quality audio. This gives me really good quality, and if I didn't have that system in there with the Las Galas to compare it against, I'd say this is like freaking awesome. This is some of the best sound I've heard because it is that good um, when everything is just right. So the Heresy 4s, I highly recommend. They're one of my favorite speakers ever, and I've listened to a lot of speakers, a lot of high-end speakers, a lot of middle-end speakers, a lot of low-end speakers. I'm listening to a pair of $300 Wharfdales right now. I'll be reviewing soon, the 225s, 299 bucks, and they're just warm and plump, and they offer a nice sound. No, they're not the last word in detail or imaging and all that, but. 299 bucks, you can get some quality stereo sound. I'll have more on those soon, but for now, I just wanted to say I still have the Heresy 4s. I still enjoy them all the time, and they're one of my most favorite speakers. I highly recommend them. Just power them correctly, and they will reward you. If you like this video, thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll be back again with more.
I'll see you next time.